When I talk about the gay rights movement, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Is it a pride parade? Is it Stonewall? Is it a protest? Or is it this man? This man is Harvey Milk. He was a supervisor in San Francisco, a gay rights activist, and was one of the first LGBT people to be elected to political office in the United States. He broke down many barriers holding back the queer community and helped start a national conversation around gay rights like there had never been before. The queer community has made immense progress in the past 50 years. From the days of the Stonewall Riots back in 1969, where LGBT people could be arrested for wearing clothes of a gender other than that assigned at birth, or for having a same-sex relationship, to where we are today, where we have presidential candidates swearing to protect LGBT rights on TV, we can see a great difference in just a few decades. However, this progress did not happen overnight, and it is important for us to remember those who fought and died for little improvements in LGBT rights over the years. One of these people was Harvey Milk. Harvey Milk was born in 1930 in Widmere, New York. He knew that he was gay fairly early on, but did not tell his family, friends, and co-workers in order to keep himself safe in a very conservative time and family. He instead buried any signs of his gayness and joined the Navy during the Korean War, becoming a lieutenant. This only lasted about two years, as he resigned from his post and was later less than honorably discharged in 1955. Following his resignation and discharge, he worked on Wall Street for a number of years, continuing to be closeted to most that he knew. While working on the Barry Goldwater presidential campaign in 1964, Milk met a man whom he would start a relationship with, and followed him out to San Francisco in 1969 after he was cast in a production of Hair. San Francisco had been known to have a large queer community since its founding, with that community only growing as soldiers were dumped in its ports after being discharged from the military for being queer. This queer community was very prevalent in an area called the Castro, and Milk seemed to find a calling in the centralized community. Milk opened a camera store at Castro Cama in March of 1973 with his then-partner Scott Smith. The store would serve many purposes besides just selling cameras and film over the years, including a polling station during elections and a meeting place for queer people. Milk first ran for city supervisor in 1973, after realizing that his interest in politics and anger at many current laws could be used to make a difference. Milk got quite a lot of media attention during this campaign due to his personality and looks, but many were thrown off by his extremely liberal policies and his hippie look. Milk lost the election, coming a tenth out of 32 candidates running in the city. Just two years later, he reconsidered his approach to campaigning, cut his long hippie hair, and ran for supervisor again. Milk lost again, finishing seventh, only one place away from a seat on the board of supervisors. Following the second loss, Milk landed a place in Mayor George Monsconi's cabinet. However, he was forced out after announcing he was once again running for public office. Only this time, he was running for California State Assembly. Milk lost yet again, but it was closer than ever before. He only lost by 7,000 votes. In 1977, inspired by the growing anti-gay political movements in the country and pushed by those in the Castro who saw him as a leader, Harvey Milk decided to run for city supervisor a third time. This time, Milk had an advantage. San Francisco had transitioned to electing its supervisors by district, meaning Harvey would not have to win over the whole city, only his district, which coincidentally was mainly the Castro. Harvey had become the unofficial mayor of Castro Street in recent years, organizing a business organization, pride parades, and protests in between campaigns. Harvey campaigned vigorously in endorsements from legendary papers, and won over many with his positions of more access to healthcare and free bus rides. On November 8, 1977, Harvey Milk won a seat on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. He became one of the first openly LGBT people ever to be elected to office, not just in the United States, but in the whole world. He made history and broke down barriers standing in the way of the LGBT community, keeping the community out of the political national stage and keeping the community out of the legislative process that controlled their own rights. However, the struggle for gay rights was not over after Milk was elected. We went into a place called Norfolk, Virginia and were met with protest and uh, um, all kinds of problems. And uh, uh, every- oh, oh, oh. This is Anita Bryant. She is a singer, former face of an orange juice company, and loud and proud homophobe. I believe that more than ever before that there are evil forces, even perhaps disguised as something good, that would want to tear down the very foundation of family unity.
Anita had devoted her free time to attempting to strip LGBT people of the few rights they had through her organization, Save Our Children, and had successfully campaigned to repeal a Miami law that protected LGBT people from being denied housing due to their sexual orientation. Along with Republican state legislator John Briggs, Anita promoted Proposition 6, also known as the Briggs Initiative. The Briggs Initiative was a California ballot measure that would have banned any openly gay person or supporters of gay people from teaching in schools in the state of California. Harvey Milk was opposed to the proposition for many clear reasons and spent much of his first year in office campaigning against it. Milk's main goal to defeat the Briggs Initiative was to gain publicity and attention not just in California, but around the world. In one of his most famous speeches, Milk urged queer people everywhere to come out in order to change the perception of what a gay person is. Gay people all across the state! The Briggs can only be defeated if each and every one of you comes out to everyone you know you must! Milk's strategy worked, with many high-profile politicians speaking out against the proposition. On election day 1978, the proposition was defeated by over a million votes, another victory for both Milk and the gay community as a whole. However, these victories for this community would be very short-lived. President of the Board of Supervisors, it's my duty to make this announcement. Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. The Is Supervisor Dan White. On November 28, 1978, Dan White, former supervisor of San Francisco who served with Milk for over a year, entered City Hall with a gun and a pocket full of bullets. He went to the second floor where he demanded his job as supervisor, which he had given up a few weeks earlier due to low pay, back from Mayor George Monsconi. When Monsconi told White he would not be giving his job back to him, White shot and killed the mayor. White then went to the supervisor's office where he shot and killed Harvey Milk. As supervisor, he had sworn to cleanse the city of deviants and held a grudge against Milk, voting against anything he proposed, including the biggest LGBT civil rights bill in the country. The assassination sent San Francisco into a deep state of mourning and disbelief, with over 30,000 people marching in a candlelit vigil from the Castro to City Hall in honor of Milk and Moscone. However, the state of mourning and confusion shifted after the verdict. White was found guilty of voluntary manslaughter, the most lenient sentence he could receive, with a maximum prison time of just two to five years. This was credited to White claiming that junk food, especially Twinkies, had made him insane. The queer community saw this as a mishandling of justice, and their pain transformed into anger. By the end of the night, the clash between thousands of San Franciscans and their police department left City Hall and countless other buildings wrecked, cars burned, and 140 injuries. The night of May 22nd, deemed the White Night Riots, were the most violent protests from the gay community since the Stonewall Riots a decade before. The next day, on what would have been Milk's 49th birthday, another protest occurred, although this time it was much more peaceful. Over 20,000 people gathered in the Castro to celebrate and mourn Harvey, his life, and his activism. Harvey Milk pushed the gay rights movement ahead by years. His activism helped break down invisible but substantial barriers, restricting the LGBT community, and brought the conversation around LGBT rights into every household in the country. Although the risks involved with simply being an openly gay person this time in history, especially one with such a large platform, ended up costing Milk his life, Harvey Milk did not die in vain. His life and death acted as a catalyst for the gay community going forwards, empowering countless queer people around the country to come out and stand up for their basic rights. Although he's been dead for over 40 years, Harvey Milk lives on. He lives on through the Presidential Medal of Freedom given to him posthumously. He lives on through the Oscar-winning movie about his life. He lives on through Harvey Milk Day and the USNS Harvey Milk, and countless other places, organizations, and more that bear his name. But most importantly, Harvey Milk lives on through every person still trying to break down the barriers holding back the LGBT community around the world.